everybody. Welcome to Naval Gazing, the Valley Indie podcast. My name is Eugene Driscoll of valleyindie.org. That's a nonprofit online newspaper covering Ansonia, Derby, and the town of Seymour. And tonight, we're going to be talking about some Derby issues. And joining me for a return appearance to Naval Gazing, the Valley Indie podcast is Mr. Jack Walsh. Hello, Jack. Eugene, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time as always. So Jack wears a million hats uh, in the city of Derby and the Valley, but tonight we're specifically talking about his role as chairman of the Derby WPCA Privatization Committee. It's gonna be an action-packed half hour here uh, on navel gazing. So this is a big subject. Why don't we start off, Jack, by just talking a little bit about what the Derby WPCA Privatization Committee is. I don't even know if I'm getting the name 100% correct, but you can. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I don't think it makes much difference. People just shorten and say Privatization Committee. But it's a committee that was appointed, uh, well, the Board of Aldermen authorized it and the mayor appointed the committee to see if an offer uh, for purchasing WPCA by a for-profit business would make any sense. So the committee's job is to gather all the data to make an informed decision on this. You know, Aquarian, you know, well-respected company in the area has made an offer. Um, the committee has to decide, does it make sense for the city to pursue this or not? And they'll make a recommendation, hopefully by the end of February. And if the recommendation is to sell, and I need to stress, there's been no decision, okay? The committee will make a, a recommendation one way or the other, and then the mayor will appoint a committee. If if its recommendation is to pursue this, then the uh, mayor will appoint a committee to negotiate uh, with Aquarian based on the recommendations from the committee, and Aquarian has already made their offer. So the, that committee that will be appointed would then take the data from you know, the privatization committee and use it as basis for negotiation. And uh, when did your committee start its work? Wow, it's well over a year now. It took a while to get it started. You know, it, it was a follow up to the regionalization study. I don't know if you remember that the city was part of a regionalization effort with, you know, Ansonia, Seymour, Oxford, Beacon Falls, and Nauticuck. In the end, it was just Ansonia, Derby, and Seymour, but it, it just didn't prove to be viable. And, you know, this was an effort at WPCA to see, are there any alternatives out there that could make the system more efficient and save taxpayers money, or ratepayers in this case, because it's not a tax, it's a rate. Uh, because we're faced with uh, enormous costs coming ahead. Uh, you know, we had the referendum in 2014, which I believe was the largest referendum in city history, $31.2 million. And we've done most of the work on that except for the plant. And that was on hold until that regionalization study was completed, but it didn't go anywhere at the end of the day. But I, I will tell you, if you saw the numbers that they were projecting for our costs over the next 20 years, range as high as $82 million. You know, you look at those numbers and you say, oh man, we just have to find a way to do this that people can afford. So th that's how we got here. And hopefully by the end of February, we'll either just you know, recommend to look at Aquarian's offer or we'll say, no, that doesn't make any sense. And we'll continue to go on our own. And then in terms of Aquarian's offer, I think I reported, I just put a link in comments, hopefully people can see it, to the last story I did on this, which was back in September. So a lot's happened that I haven't reported since then. But at that time, it looked like Aquarian had an offer on the table. Uh, they described it as a 50, 50 and five zero million dollar investment, which included $18 million in cash to Derby, plus a 32 million capital investment. And then that's correct. And then uh, Aquarian also, and I'll put this in the chat as well, they did a PowerPoint presentation where they went through their offer to the city of Derby and people can check that out uh, there. So will your committee 
do you make a recommendation just to the mayor or does it go to the board of aldermen and women and they vote both. on it? Both. Uh, you know, we make the recommendation to both and then they decide the next steps. Um, but, you know, it's it's a very complex subject. And, you know, what's happened between September and now? Well, you know, Aquarian is a big company. Uh, again, a very well-respected company, and they've done their homework. You know, they've come in and examined the facilities. They've looked at all our financial data, and they've made their offer based on what they think would work for the city and for them. Well, we have to do the same thing on our end. You know, we have to get the numbers as we see them. So the effort was to hire an outside group to do a, a formal appraisal of everything that uh, WPCA owns. I will tell you, that it's taken a little longer than we wanted because when we went out to bid the first time, we only got one bid and it was for over $200,000 to do the study. Well, that just, just wasn't practical. There's no way in the world. So we decided to go out again and we did get two better offers and we decided on a rough TELUS. And they have completed a draft of the basic work but at the end they came back to us and said you know you you really might want us to finish this up by doing future rate projections based on what it would be if we went alone or or what possibly the aquarium would charge so we're finishing that up now okay they started the first week in january we hope to have that completed by well, my target is either February 6th or February 13th, they would make their final report to the committee. We'd spend two more weeks going through it. And hopefully by the end of February, we'll have our proposal back to the mayor and the board of aldermen. And how many people are on your committee? Uh, let me just go through uh, again. Uh, we have right now one, two, three, four, five, seven. Uh, and it's a balanced committee. The mayor appointed uh, people from WPCA, uh, the Board of Aldermen, the Board of Apportionment Taxation, the finance director, who unfortunately is gone at this point. There is no finance director. And also the city treasurer, Maria Conlon. So we've got seven active people on the committee right now. And you're you're getting pretty close to your deadline of February, you're saying, where we're halfway through or more than halfway through January at this point. Can you give us a sense of, I mean, the offer from Aquarian, the, is it looking good? I mean, it's not, did Raftalis come back with a completely different dollar amount? How's it looking in terms of where this thing might go? Well, I, you know, I can't go in, into detail on that because that could be subject to negotiations later on. But I'll say they've done a, a very thorough job. They've given us the numbers that we need so we can compare it with, with Aquarians. Uh, it'll be up to the committee to decide, you know, what makes the most sense. And, you know, if it doesn't make sense, then the recommendation will be don't do it. But Reftelis is, I've got to tell you, they've been very responsive. Uh, the first part, they were right on target with when they said they would get it done, and they got it done. We had a little bit of a delay between the approval of the second part and the actual signing of the contract. But they, they've been great. They've been great. I just had emails again from them today that, uh, you know, there's there's some additional financial information they need from the city, but they still expect to meet that deadline and give us that report. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm anxious to get it done. This has been dragging on. Well, you know, I, and I'm not just talking about the privatization, but this whole issue of how do we make WPCA more cost effective for the people? Well, I, I guess you'd have to say since 2014. Yeah, and for anybody just joining us, this is Jack Walsh, of course. I mean, everybody in the Valley knows him, but I just want to state, just to be perfectly clear, Jack's a volunteer. When we say Derby WPCA and the WPCA Privatization Committee, these are appointed volunteers who are looking at this issue. Jack's also the chairman of the WPCA, which is the oversight, uh, appointed oversight board of the actual WPCA, the workers and the infrastructure uh, right. after you've that, that all take place, you know, after you flush your toilet and the, the processing plant down there in downtown Derby. And yeah, I was gonna say like one thing as a reporter who's covered Derby now since 2009, 
the WPCA has been, I mean, when we did that referendum in 2014 that voters approved, there was talk at the time when it was leading up to it, there was countless meetings on, you know, the fact that basically the infrastructure in Derby, the sewer infrastructure system had been kicked, the can had been kicked down the road for so long. And it got to the point where it was like in 2014, you had to do something. You had what federal regulators coming in, say you had to do something and very, very, very expensive. And after all that money and rebuilding and getting new pump stations, it never, it wasn't designed to make a, a brand new system, right. uh, the, the main processing plant uh, in, in the downtown. I don't know if people are aware of that, and I don't know if I just explained it, but what can you add to that? No, that, that, that was pretty good. There were, there were two consent orders. We had a consent order from DEEP, and we had a consent order from e EPA that the city signed. I believe the city finally signed it in 2016. So I need to explain that if the city doesn't do this, they'll be taken to court. Okay. Now, in 2014, with the referendum, WPCA did submit a plan for the plant. And as you say, it wouldn't solve all the problems going forward, but it would have gotten into some full compliance. And it was submitted to the state DEP. And most people don't realize it was submitted and they accepted it, but they never approved it. Okay. It was never approved. In the meantime, this issue of the regionalization came up, and as a result of that, things were put on hold. Now, two years ago, in discussions with Deep, they said, well, you need to upgrade that 2014 plan, but you have to take into consideration any recommendations coming from the regionalization. So we kind of lost three years there, because mm. that's how long the regionalization plan took. Um, and at the end of the day, there was nothing coming out of that. So we had to submit a new plan, which we did without the, the um, regionalization. And that's still sitting uh, with deep. And, you know, we talked to them and said, well, we've got one other thing we're looking at. And that's this possible option. And they've been very, very cooperative with it. They know that we're doing our best. We've met every obligation we had under the consent agreements. We've built all the pump stations. We're doing $270,000 a year of just I and I work, which is trying to get water that shouldn't be in the system out of it, mainly because of old uh, pipes and that leak. Um, so we've made a lot of progress uh, and I, I can't compliment our staff enough because they're working under some very difficult circumstances down there holding this whole thing together until we decide what this next step is going to be and i guess the the idea being i mean the, the 31 million dollar referendum that voters approved is that that's why we pay that capital fee if there's new people in derby or maybe they got their bill and they forget that's why you'll see in a single family house what is it is it 256 dollars right isn't that the 257 i think it is 257 i always get that wrong but that's what they were paying for it's all the the work on the pump stations that, that was done that's what that capital fee is but uh, you know the sense is, I mean, the, you know, the fact of the matter is, more work needs to be done. And so now, was it Mayor Zekin who kind of said, "All right, let's just let's look at privatization at this point," because we've had this ten years of almost nonstop costs, uh, and and how much, how how sustainable is this, and might privatization be cheaper in the long run? I guess that's the hope, if any. Right. Basically, you know, it would have to be a better deal than than we have right now. Okay, and you know, you look at those costs, and it's it's staggering. As I said, the the first uh, cut from the the group that came in for the regional study, looking at Derby, and their estimate of what it would cost Derby to go alone from uh, now until 2040 was 82 million dollars. Now that came down later on, but it's still at least 70 million dollars. Yeah, and so here's a question from Tom Harbison. Uh, of Shelton, and, and thank you so much for asking a question. If people have questions, I know this can be a, a dry subject, but please ask anything. If, if this isn't making sense to you, please, this is the time to, to get clarification on any of this. But he asks, are there, any, are there other municipalities or sewer districts that have gone this privatization route? And if so, are there things we can learn from their actions? Do you have any knowledge of that, Mr. Walsh? Yeah, a little bit, because I 
was looking to see wh where it's happening. It's, it's not a big thing in this part of the country, but it is big and growing around the country. And I think what's happened is a lot of smaller towns in particular have gotten in a situation like Derby and saying, wow, we can't afford this. So, but in Connecticut, there is one right now that's in the works uh, in New Hartford. It's a smaller system than ours, but uh, basically uh, I think they're pretty close to finalizing their agreement. And we'll learn from that. You know, there've been other, not privatizations, but uh, there were other things that have been done. Some people have hired outside groups to run their plants and their facilities. I think Seymour had a little- Seymour, yes, I was gonna say, yeah. Right. Although they're running, in, I remember a couple of years ago, they're running into some of the same problems sure that Derby are. had a couple of years ago by, by lack of maintenance and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. That's why they were a participant in the regional study. You know, at the and everybody ran from that regional study. That was kind of, I guess from, I mean, you feel bad for the people who, I mean, Envy Cog and everybody who was involved in studying that. and. It just kind of, and Sonia and, and, and Seymour were sort of like, thanks, but no thanks. Well, you know, it was a hard thing for everybody. Look, the, the city that had the most to gain out of that was Derby, okay? Because we're facing the biggest crisis in it. Uh, but the question becomes, how do you divide up the cost then? You know, obviously I, I think Derby should pay more for a regional thing because our facilities were the most outdated and would be the most costly. So it's not fair to ask uh, a city like Ansonia, which has spent $50 million to upgrade all, all their facilities to pay the same thing that Derby did. So, but we never got to that point. We, we never got to that point. You, you know, again, if you go back to MV Cog site, all the numbers are still out there, all the different combinations that could have worked or not worked. They came down to one major one that they thought had the greatest possibility, but you know, again, Derby would have been the biggest beneficiary based on those reports. But that's because we were in the worst shape. So, uh, but it didn't work. You know, so no use crying over spilled milk. You've got to keep moving forward. And again, I, I have to compliment our our staff. They're keeping it going. Right. And I, I, my next question, I maybe I should have asked this earlier, but in terms of the staff, how many employees? does the WPCA have here in Derby? I think we have seven at the plant and then one and a half, not even quite one and a half in the clerical at City and, Hall. And do we know, let's say, and this is speculating in the, in the answer or the decision has not been reached, but if Derby was to eventually sell to Aquarian, do we know what would become of the WPCA staff? Would they be guaranteed jobs in the, yes. go ahead. A absolutely. And you know, we would never make a deal that didn't protect the, the employees. Okay. And that's, we've been upfront about that from the beginning. And, you know, it, it appears and talking to Aquarian that the employees might be better off. Okay. And salaries might be a little better. Okay. Obviously more job opportunities would be there, but you know, we'll probably get a briefing for the employees from Aquarian directly because we're, we we do not want to force anybody to do anything. But we want to make sure they have opportunities and they will bottom line they will have opportunities and just to, to rehash because it was new to me in terms of the process so you're on a privatization committee you're the chairman you're going to make a recommendation or your committee is going to make a, make a recommendation in the next few weeks hopefully sometime in, in february you were saying earlier and then at that point the rec recommendation will go to the mayor and the board of aldermen and then if it's favorable they could set up another committee to be sort of a negotiating committee. Is that how it would go? Right. Right. Because, you know, obviously uh, I think they're, you know, Aquarian made an offer and there'll be some give and take. There always is because, you know, even when they made the offer, there are issues that come up that you don't think about at the beginning, particularly on our side. They've thought more about it, but you know, there are all kinds of issues. Uh, what happens with connection fees? Will they do the connection fees? Will we do the connection fees? How will things be billed? So, that, I mean, there's a lot of negotiating that would have to take place. But, you know, the goal is to, to see, again, if it makes sense to do this. And I can't stress enough, there's no decision made one way or the other at this point. You know, even, even though I'm the chairman, of, I cannot tell you what way people are leaning. Mm. 
because I don't know. I can't tell. Everybody has been coming to the meeting and asking the questions that need to be asked and trying to get all the details that they need to make an educated decision on this. And then we have another. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just saying it's complicated. It's not that simple. Here's another question from Tom Harbison. Thanks again, Tom. Be it private or public, the capital investments would need to be recouped. How would future rates be established or approved if it were a privatized operation? Uh, again, that's a question we asked right. That, you know, I mentioned the second half of the Fref Tellus study. That's partly uh, a result of that, trying to find out what the rates will be. Because as Tom said, you know, companies are uh, going to be making investments in the system. They have to recoup those. But they will also be regulated as a public utility. So they will have to justify their rate, whatever they are, to the DPUC, if DPUC is still around, because I, I see the state is talking about making some different arrangements with that. But they will have to go and have those rates approved uh, before they can implement them. The, um, the offer that they made, and you've seen it, the, they proposed that uh, their rates would be frozen for at least two years. There'd be no increases for two years. Let me put that uh, PDF back in the comments because I'm just realizing when I put it in the comments, I didn't put the context. It's just a crazy link that looks like I'm sending you to uh, some <laughs> phishing scam. Uh, Aquarian offer. Sorry for speaking out loud. Uh, and mentioning uh, that they'll be regulated, that brings me to, I did when I, when I set up this live stream earlier today, we did so have some comments in the comment section there. I told people to come back and ask them at 7 p.m., but I can just go ahead and, and steal them. We just had, and they're not really, most, mostly they're comments. Uh, Carrie Jones Salami, Salomi, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. She just says, yes. Don Nelson says, if it sells, imagine how high our capital fee will be then. Uh, well, let me just uh, sure. add, at some point, there will be more capital fees, okay, because we know that the $31 million will not solve all these problems. So at some point, uh, you know, I've tried to stress, we would not want to go back to a referendum when we're collecting uh, the 257 now, but. And that's if, 30 years, right? Is that a 30 year? Uh, I, I think they were estimated 20 to 30 years until it's paid off. Okay. Okay. And keep in mind that, um, based, in fact, the time's quite a little bit, how that would work if it were sold, you know, the money that we would get would pay off all the borrowing that we've done so far. The city, so the city won't have any debt on that, but the capitalization and future costs of any capital would become obviously Aquarians. Very complicated. And I'm just going to note for anybody listening and for Jack, my wife just came home from uh, the Shelting skating rink with my daughter. So the, you're going to hear a dog barking in a second. My dog always gets excited when my wife shows up. Uh, another comment was from Estella Jacka. All of the people, oh, I skipped one. I'm sorry. Mike Callaher just simply responded, yes. So he <laughs> thinks this is a good idea. And then under that, Stella Jacka said, all of the people commenting, yes. Why? We've just been talking about how awful Eversource and their price hikes are. And that is precisely the end result of privatizing public utilities. Water is a public utility. Why do you think it should be a private for-profit company? It's crazy. So another uh, opinion or, or point of view right there. And there's my dog barking. Well, keep in mind, you know, the water is a public utility. Uh, your electric is a public utility. There are a lot of public utilities. Um, and again, I'm not for or against any of them until we finish this study, but uh, there are other examples. He's right. Uh, look, no one wants to pay more, okay? I, and I don't care what it is. No one wants to pay more, and that's understandable. Uh, and that's what this is all about. Can we find a way to do this to keep the cost down? I, I won't know that answer until the end of February, but hopefully – We'll find one way or the other. John Erlinghauser says, uh, insane idea. And then Leo Moscato uh, says, no, come to think of it, the idea to sell Derby as a whole to another town such as Shelton would probably be financially prudent. And the taxpayers would absolutely love what would happen. 
So that goes back to Tom Harbison, who's always saying uh, combine Shelton and Derby. So we have some conspiracy between Leo Moscato, who I think lives down south now, and, uh, and, and Tom Harbison across the river. But I appreciate the comment, Leo. Yeah, you know, that's that's an issue for another committee. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you don't say that because because Mayor Zeke will appoint you like overnight. No, no, I'm done. After this, I'm done. Uh, we'll close out. I wanted to ask you, uh, I mean, if people wanted to find out more about this privatization committee, I assume you've been doing most of your meetings on Zoom. So the city does an outstanding job, City of Derby, of you can go to the City of Derby website and click meetings and then give it a second for everything to load. And you can go back month by month or by committee by committee. And is that where your, your recordings are, Jack? Yeah, and I, I wanna also mention uh, the first committee in the Valley of any city government that went to uh, that kind of thing. Guess what? WPCA, we've never missed a meeting. And then I have to confess that I messed up this week. We had a, a privatization meeting uh, on Monday and at the end, I did something wrong, and I lost the recording. Story first, of my life. <laughs> first time in three years that happened. But uh, uh, just for anyone's reference, there was no action taken at the meeting anyways. It was just a general discussion. Uh, but I couldn't believe it. I got done, and I, usually as soon as the meeting is over, because I'm, I'm doing it on my computer, I, I send it to the city. I went to send it, and the file is sitting there, a name with it. No file. I've done that. I haven't done it like through a whole broadcast yet, but like little things where I'm trying to record like my own, like a, a single uh, podcast episode or whatever they call this. And I'll have hit record and then stop. And then I think it's recording. I've done like uh, that a million times. When does the committee meet? What's like your, what's your meeting schedule? Obviously there are, they're open to the public. Originally when we started, we were trying to do the second and fourth uh, Mondays of the month. Uh, but you know, while we were waiting for the, data there wasn't much we could do uh so now we at the meeting the other day we kind of agreed that we're going to meet weekly once we have reptile is coming to give us the final report okay and then this is another question that just came in from a scott beanie would the wpca still look at having a contractor come in and manage and operate the systems and have the wpca still have control which i think is scott that's sort of what seymour has i believe so is that uh, sorry? I, you know, I I can't answer that at this point. You know, if this doesn't happen, that could be another option to look at. I will say though, I I think, as I said before, I think our staff does an excellent job with the resources they have. It's just unfortunate that the resources aren't as strong as they need to be, and the facility is outdated. If you look at the uh, the deep report and the regional report, it says it's 20 years beyond its life expectancy and it's it's still running. 20 years beyond its life expectancy. So staff is doing uh, the best that they can with what they've got. At some point, we're gonna have to pay the piper. Is that the, uh, yeah. is that the phrase, right? Pretty much. And it, we right before we went live, we were talking about uh, the, what's interesting is that the rate in Derby has pretty much remained consistent going back at least a decade. There's never been, I mean, I remember when everyone first noticed the WPCA was around 2009, 2010 or so, when there was a, all of a sudden, nobody was paying attention and there was a big increase. And then the whole city kind of went nuts. And that sort of kicked off all this talk about, okay, it resulted in the $31 million referendum. Absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned to you, we've had one increase since I've been involved. Uh, and that was two years ago. And the reason came because, as I told you, advances in technology hurt our bottom line. Uh, the, the rate that people pay is partly based on the water usage. And a good thing happened <laughs> nationwide. People went out and made their toilets and their showers and their sprinklers more efficient, and they were using a lot less water. I, I looked at the decline that we had in revenues and the reason for the decline in revenue was it's based on the water bill and people weren't using as much water. So that's a good thing overall, but it hurt our bottom line. So we had to make it up with a, with a rate increase because the, the plant is still going to cost the same to operate either way. 
Yeah, that's very interesting. Did the nursing homes shutting down, right? Because Derby has lost two nursing homes over the last 10 years. Did that have anything to do with it, too? That no, you, that you know? had a little. But I, I, no, I don't know what the day was. Yeah, probably had a little bit to do with it. Uh, we also lost some industry. You know, uh, but the numbers were there. I, you know, I was tracking it over a five-year period. I said, what's the difference here? And then I looked. It was the water bills. That's very interesting. Yeah, so you've been the chairman of the WPCA for only two years? No. Would you say? Or, cause, yeah. I'm in my second term. I think I started in 2016, so I'm in my sixth or seventh year. It's a lot of work. And then John Sacky before you, that was a heck of a lot of work. And again, uh, yeah. it's volunteer. It, yeah, John did uh, a lot of work to get that referendum through. And John, by the way, is on the privatization committee because of his expertise. Gotcha. All right, Jack, those are pretty much all my questions. It's been about 30 minutes. Uh, if anybody else has any, if you've been if you've been scared to ask a question, now is the time to do so, because I got to go upstairs and feed the dog. But is there anything else you wanted to add, Jack, anything that I might not have asked you? Because this is one of the, this is a tough issue to cover because one, I'm a moron. Two, it's large. It's a, it's unwieldy, this whole issue. Yeah, I'm glad that, you know, you took the time to have this tonight because people have to understand uh, what a big financial decision this is for the for the city of Derby. You know, you, you threw out Aquarian's $50 million number. I threw out the two numbers from the regionalization study, $82 million, $70 million. <laughs> it's a big decision. It's a big decision. There are going to be more costs no matter what we do. But let's just hope we find the cheapest way and more, most efficient and also the one that works because, you know, people always come in and say, well, I can do it for this. I can do it for that. The question is, can they do it for this or for that? You know, I, I joke all the time. Anytime we go out to bid for a project and then we meet with the, the bidder that got it, I said, look, one thing I don't want to see is a change order. Okay, because every time there's a change order, it means we're getting more. You know, you bid on it. Let's make sure it comes in at, at that number, because that's that's why we awarded a bid. So exactly. The only, right. I, I will say, if there's anyone there, the look, the only bad question is the one that doesn't get asked. So if you have a question, I try to answer it. Yeah, and this will be up. Uh, it's this is also going to be on uh, valleyindy.org, the homepage, all weekend. Uh, and it'll be uh, here on Facebook. So if, you, if you're catching in a replay, feel free to uh, post your comment or question there. And I can always email Jack or if Jack's checking it out, uh, he can or someone can address it that way as well. But uh, the last comment, I suppose, is from Tom Harbison. Again, thank you. One of the longtime Valley Indy supporters, almost as long as Mr. Jack Walsh. Thanks <laughs> to Jack for all his contributions and thoughtfulness. P.S. Sherby. He wants the, the consolidated town or city of Sherby. He wants to. Well, what, what was the other one? I heard uh, Durbonia over the years. Yeah, Durbonia. Yeah, Durbonia. And I, I, well, since we're doing that, I need to clear up. It was never Birmingham. Okay. Birmingham was a borough of the city of Derby. Some people think that, you know, the whole thing was called Birmingham. No, I'm one of those people. Birmingham was only the downtown area, a separate borough of the city of Derby, just as Ansonia was a borough of the city of Derby. So Don't tell Mayor Cassetti. We named it Birmingham as it once was. Well, that, that was only part of Derby, not the whole thing. Was Birmingham like sort of, sort of the hoity-toity fancy part of, uh, of, of, well, the, of the city in those days? It was the area where the industry expanded. It was, uh, you know, Anson Phelps and his cohorts, they built the factories down there and uh, a planned community in downtown, the layout of the streets, north and south, east and west. Um, so that was, that became the financial powerhouse, not just of Derby, but of the whole valley. You know, people, it's hard for them to imagine, especially since there's nothing down downtown on one side of the street now but uh, derby was the economic power that's where all the banks were that's where all the money was it is pretty amazing now to see the route 34 project just in my short time being involved or paying attention to what's been happening with city government it's it's happening that that, that all that mess we see they're yeah. expanding the road at 2.8 million dollars of that is the sewers 
That's still from the $31 million referendum, right? That's, is that what's, okay. Yeah. And the leftover. You, by, you see all the big pipes, those are ours that are going gotcha. in the ground right now, so. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So for Mr. Jack Walsh, I am Eugene Driscoll, and this was Naval Gazing, the Valley Indie Podcast. Wait, we have got, oh, we got a last minute from Mr. Harbinson. Given that if something goes wrong, it must be repaired. Operating a sewer system is a risky business to conduct if you don't have substantial reserves. It seems that privatization is appropriate from a risk management perspective. So that is Tom Harbison's opinion on that. Always well informed. I will say, like I've heard over the years, it used to be like little scuttlebutts in some of the budget meetings that the, the WPCA does have a healthy reserve. I mean, there used to be some talk from like the yeah, uh, yeah. that it was like oh it was almost too much but how i mean you, that's because if something breaks it's a billion dollars i remember you right. saying that and just ask uh, the city of ansonia two years ago they had a water break it cost them a million dollars and then they had another one on the other side of town i forget how much that costs but if you didn't have reserves what would you do so we do have, have some reserves on paper we look a lot better than we are because it could be, and and given the condition of the main plant, it could all. That's right. It could be overnight. You could lose it all. All right. We'll end with that. Thank you so much, Jack. Okay. Thank you.